good morning today we shall uh, discuss about the prostaglandin its synthesis its function and the drugs and we shall uh, discuss an mcq finally okay so most of them would have been uh, familiar with this flow chart it's fine so your prostaglandin synthesis so i'm going to tell very quickly how this is synthesized okay so if you look at uh, the prostaglandins it is basically synthesis from your phospholipids phospholipids as we all know they are basically present in your cell membrane and with the help of an enzyme phospholipase a2 they are converted to arachidonic acid so remember that this phospholipase a2 is the rate limiting step for the synthesis of prostaglandins okay this is very important and if you ask me what drug acts here to inhibit it i'll say that is your corticosteroids so corticosteroids inhibit your phospholipase a2 and then once the arachidonic acid is formed it is converted to prostaglandin with the help of cyclooxygenase activity so here if you see it divides into two it divides into cyclooxygenase which we are going to discuss and it also divides into your lipooxygenase pathway which we are not going to discuss i will discuss that during the respiratory system okay so once your arachidonic acid is uh, converted to prostaglandin with the help of cyclooxygenase this prostaglandin g2 with the help of uh, endoperoxidases they are converted to prostaglandin h2 and finally they are give they give rise to three things okay that is nothing but your thromboxane the first one is your thromboxane a2 so whenever i say thromboxane the first thing that should come to your mind is your platelets okay the thromboxanes platelets so these thromboxane they are basically synthesized by your platelets with the help of an enzyme thromboxane synthetase so this thromboxane synthase uh, they give rise to your thromboxane a2 okay and if you move to prostacyclin they are synthesized by your endothelium fine they are synthesized by the endothelium they give rise to prostaglandin i2 okay the intermediate this is your intermediate it is it is between the thromboxane and your prostacyclin isn't it so with the help of an enzyme isomerase your prostaglandin h2 is converted to e d and f fine so this is how your prostaglandin is synthesized and now we shall uh, look at uh, the actions of prostaglandins so in the kidney if you see this prostaglandin it causes vasodilation and natriuresis fine whenever i say vasodilation i am increasing the flow of your uh, electrolytes so what happens your sodium your potassium your water all these are uh, you know they are uh, excreted more and that is obviously going to be caused by your prostaglandins fine so if you recollect uh, another drug which acts which has the same mechanism of action similar to your prostaglandins that is nothing but your diuretics isn't it so your diuretics will have the same mechanism especially your loop diuretics your loop diuretics so whenever i give a loop diuretic for example i give a furosemide this furosemide will go and it will increase the production of your cyclooxygenase so ultimately what happens this is going to happen so this cyclooxygenase is going to join hands with your diuretics fine so uh, whenever uh, i give an um, diuretics the prostaglandins are going to increase the action of the diuretics okay now coming to this syndrome you see here it is barter syndrome fine this syndrome is characterized by your increased sodium excretion that is na natriuresis you have uh, increased potassium excretion which might lead to hypokalemia you have uh, your increased water clearance all this so when when i see all these conditions i call it as a barter syndrome so now you will be very clear that what you are going to give so ultimately my aim is going to be i have to block this cyclooxygenase this cyclooxygenase should not be here if i block it this is not going to happen isn't it so i give your nsaid fine i give nsaids so what nsaid i am going to give i am giving indomethacin so barter syndrome the drug of choice is indomethacin what is barter syndrome natriuresis increased water clearance increased potassium excretion which might lead to hypokalemia fine so this is the action of prostaglandins in your kidney now moving on to platelets so when i when i said earlier right so whenever i say platelets it's going to be thromboxanes isn't it so uh, the thromboxane a2 a for aggregation fine a for aggregation of platelets okay so uh, 
as I said, this thromboxane and this prostacycline, they are enemies, right? So thromboxane I2, I is for your inhibition of platelets and thromboxane, uh, sorry, prostaglandin I2, I is for inhibition and thromboxane A2, A is for your aggregation of platelets. So this is going to, thromboxane is going to cause your aggregation of platelets, which is ultimately going to stop your bleeding and your prostaglandin I2 is going to inhibit your platelet aggregation, which is ultimately going to cause you bleeding. Fine. Okay. Now, uh, whenever I use these two analogs, for example, I am giving a non-specific COX-2 inhibitor. This is going to block both your A2 and your prostacycline. Okay. So, whenever I block these two, at some point of time, your prostacycline synthesis is increased by the peroxidase activity. So, this process is going to continue at some point of time. But if you look here, it can never be reverted back that is your thromboxane synthesis can never be reverted back when I give a non-specific COX-2 inhibitor because your platelet doesn't have nucleus and it doesn't have the capacity to form again the thromboxane synthase so what happens ultimately your prostacycline activity is more which is nothing but your inhibition of platelets so that is going to cause you bleeding fine so I am giving low dose aspirin which is nothing but an antiplatelet drug that is for your it is a prophylaxis for MI and stroke fine I am giving low dose aspirin for MI and stroke prophylaxis epoprostinol it is basically given for this epoprostinol it is given for dialysis it is given for dialysis and cardio pulmonary bypass fine I am giving low dose aspirin for the prophylaxis of MI and stroke I am giving epoprostinol for dialysis and cardiopulm cardiopulmonary bypass. Fine. Okay. This is the action of your prostaglandins on platelets. Okay. Now, coming into the uterus. Fine. So, basically, uterus in a sense, you have to remember these two. Fine. Your uh, D, E, F. Fine. You can easily remember it, right? So, A, B, C, E, D, F. Fine. So, uh, your uterus, your prostaglandins on uterus, they are going to cause contraction of the uterus. Fine. So, whenever I do that, fine, I am going to cause a mid trimester abortion. Fine. Or it can induce abortion in the first few weeks of pregnancy. Okay. So, uh, the contraction of uterus is required for your labor. Fine. Okay. Now, PGE2, this. So, you are going to concentrate only in these portions. Fine. So, your PGE2 and PGF2A. You should not say simply PGE2 and F2A. So, you should definitely know the drug name. It is nothing but dinoprostone and carboprost. Fine. Dinoprostone and carboprost, they are given either intravaginally or intraamniotic and they are, they are used to induce your mid trimester abortion. One. And this guy, this guy is a very important blood sucker, Mr. Prostol. Misoprostol is a PGE1 analog and this when used along with methotrexate or mifeprestone fine this when used along with methotrexate or mifeprestone they are going to cause abortion in the first few weeks of pregnancy fine so hope you don't try it so carboprost carboprost is PGF2A analog carboprost so you should definitely remember the names denoprostone carboprost and carbo um, fine your uh, misoprostol okay this carboprost which is nothing but your prostaglandin f2e analog they are used to control your postpartum hemorrhage fine they are used to control your postpartum hemorrhage and if you look at this prostaglandin uh, they are d used to cause pain during your menstruation okay so in order to inhibit it i'm using something called as mifinimic acid mifinimic acid for your menstrual pain okay so uh, Use of this menstrual in pregnancy that will result in what is called as your Mobius syndrome. That's very important. So if you ask me what will what, what you can see in Mobius syndrome, it is nothing but it is your abnormal development of your cranial nerves. Most commonly your abducent and your facial nerve, your sixth and your seventh cranial nerves. Fine. So if I use misoprostone in pregnancy, that can cause me Mobius syndrome. Just nothing but your cranial nerve abnormality especially your 6th and your 7th nerve abnormality. Okay, coming to the next section of prostaglandin, it is going to be on G80. Fine. So, basically if you look at prostaglandin E2 and prostaglandin I2, 
these two drugs sorry these two prostaglandins they are going to decrease your acid secretion and increase your mucus production fine they are going to prevent your uh, peptic ulcer formation they are going to decrease the chances of peptic ulcer formation so what happens when i give an nsaid it is go it is going to block this prostaglandin so ultimately that is going to result in peptic ulcer disease fine so the drug of choice for this is misoprostol so misoprostol is a more specific drug that can be used for peptic ulcer due to chronic nsaid use fine so what happens when i regularly use aspirin or uh, silicoxib uh, it decreases the chance of your colonic ulcers so prostaglandin they are prone for colon cancers fine they are more prone for this colon cancers and when i give uh, aspirin or silicoxib it decreases the risk of colonic polyps or cancers okay in the eye so basically prostaglandin it reduces your intraocular pressure so you should remember that when the condition the intraocular pressure is increased it's going to be your exactly it's going to be your glaucoma so whenever i see a patient with glaucoma i am going to give him prostaglandin analog which is your prostaglandin f2a analog which is your lantanoprost very important drug for glaucoma lantanoprost fine okay other drugs other than your lantanoprost if you see you have something called as bimetoprost you have something called as travaprost you have something called as unoprostone these drugs you should remember bimetoprost travaprost unoprostone fine okay now coming to thromboxane a2 thromboxane a2 as i said it is an it helps in aggregation of platelets so cox inhibitors like aspirin they decrease your thromboxane a2 synthesis and uh, daltrobin and saltrobin they are your tranexamic acid receptor antagonist fine they prevent your binding of your uh, prostaglandins to the tranexamic uh, to your thromboxin fine that is your is it is a receptor antagonist and uh, daso da desoxibin fine desoxibin inhibits the enzyme thromboxane synthase it inhibits it it your uh, desoxibin it inhibits your thromboxane synthase okay coming to the cns as i as i already said you know the cns it is going to stimulate your hypothalamus and it is going to increase your temperature it is going to cause fever so i am giving nsaid as an antipyretic agent here fine so in the peripheral nerve endings if you if you don't know what it happens in the peripheral nerve endings i have uh, taken a video on pain pathway so you can see there your injury causes the release of chemicals especially your prostaglandins which is taken by the nociceptors and carried to your dorsal horn of your spinal cord via your a delta or your c fibers so you can see there and uh, uh, you know your nsaids they are used as an analgesics because to control the pain caused by this prostaglandins okay the male reproductive system it causes you know um, they are used to treat your erectile dysfunction the drug of choice is alprostadil it's very important drug it is used to treat your erectile dysfunction coming to the mcq a relatively newer agent latanoprost is now being used which of the following statement is true regarding this now if you if you re, if you have read the prostaglandins very good you by this time you should know what is this latanoprost this is your excellent it is used in i in case of glaucoma it is used in case of glaucoma so uh, you 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 are aware of the fact that it is a prostaglandin analog it is going to act in your eye what it do, what it does it going to decrease your intraocular pressure okay now reading out the options it is a prostaglandin f2a derivative used in glaucoma so this is a very very convincing answer for me so that doesn't mean that i'm not going to read the remaining three options i'm going to read but this option is very convincing okay it is a selective alpha 1 blocker no it is a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor no this is your anti androgen drug and uh, it is a prostaglandin e2 analog no it is a prostaglandin f2a analog okay so uh, the answer is this so you can easily relate the questions once you know the drug names and uh, where it acts okay so if you know this uh, drug name you hardly take just 10 seconds for this question once you don't know what is latanoprost and you go on read the options you are not going to arrive and ultimately you might end up wrongly fine so uh, thank you for watching this video guys if you find this video helpful please share with your friends thank you